All right, to continue on with this uh, conversation around using poetry for fluency and literacy, um, I think we've established that poems are fun to reread and it gives the kids an authentic reason to reread it. Um, a question that we get asked a lot though is, does that fluency they gain in reading poetry, can you see or show any transfer to content area? Is it gonna help them with their science text? Is it gonna help them with their social studies text? How does the uh, reading of poetry and using it as a tool transfer to content area? Okay, well, we know that in content area that there are a lot more tier three words. Um, that being said, in content area text, there's also a lot of tier one and tier two words. Um, we, we can't exclude those, and that's a lot of what's in poetry also. So, for example, if the word garden is used in a poem, and they see that word garden in the content area text, it's the word that they're learning, not just um, the specific words within science and social studies. So, when kids become more fluent in the basic tier one and tier two words, that's an easy transfer. While they, they might be learning a few more words that are academic language, they're, they're also able to do that transfer um, quickly because of the muscle memory that's created through um, the fluency of, of practicing and getting familiar with those words and then becoming automatic. Tim? Yeah, well, you know, one of the questions I'm often asked is, you know, you can get kids to do repeated readings and they get good at that one text, but so what good is that? We want kids to be able to read all texts fluently. And one of the things we've learned from early, the early research on fluency was when you rehearse something and, and, and reach proficiency on that one text, it transfers to other texts, whether they're literary text or science texts or right. social studies, whatever. And so, you know, the idea, the neat thing about this type of fluency is it, it generalizes. It, we're not just teaching poetry for the sake of poetry. We're teaching poetry because you're going to become a better reader by doing it, yeah. no matter what it is that you read. And I, wonder, way, I just want to do a shout out to my favorite baseball team, Cleveland Indians. Go, go drive. <laughs> Spring training got abbreviated. Yeah, I, I know. Michael, I'm thinking of your poem, Goggles, that talks about the scientific process. And it has a couple big words in it. It has categorized, theorized. Yeah. And um, so the kids, if they learn that in the context of the poem, yeah. then that, of course, uh, that vocabulary transfers as background knowledge. Would that be? Yeah, right? correct. Go ahead, Tim. <laughs> no, no, I, I just agree that all, all these things do. Uh, you know, reading, learning to read is a pretty complicated thing. It's not just the individual words. It's the, uh, uh, the meaning embedded in the text and all those things generalize from the, the, the poem to uh, other texts that kids are going to be encountering. Now, I don't have any scientific facts to back me up on this. Maybe you guys know, but I would piggyback on what Melissa was saying. And um, I think getting that fluency and getting that comfort with those tier one and two words could lead to um, improving the kids' confidence in their own reading. And I know that confidence is a big, uh, big factor in, in, in being a good reader or, being, or wanting to read. Right, and, and not only is it just confidence, but um, when, once kids become automatic with that, it's sort of that percentage that we talk about with brain capacity, that the percent of, of brain energy that's needed to put into comprehending needs to be a really high percent. And so if they're having to decode still, um, then that's taking up some of what their brain energy is needing. And so once they become fluent, it doesn't matter if it's poetry or prose that that, that transfers and then they can concentrate specifically on that academic language. See, I would, I would transfer that to my bicycle riding and I would call that this, I would call this, 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 um, understanding of the tier one and two words is like riding in a draft then. You kind of, you're, 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 you're already hmm. headed in the right direction because you've got that to build on. So then you can, you can go a little bit faster than you could without having that, having that, that background knowledge. I think that- Nice metaphor, are you a poet? I, 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 I try. <laughs> like you gotta write a poem. <laughs> I, I've written a few bicycle poems in my time, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I think that's it. That, thank you for that answer. Thank you. And I look forward to chatting with you more. Hey, thanks. All right. We are good at this. <laughs>
Yeah, we should have a